Amen. Jonah chapter number one this morning. Jonah chapter number one. Jonah chapter number one. This will be a little new to me this morning too, so it just all kind of moved around earlier this morning. So just read a few verses and then we'll get into the message this morning. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, young people, for listening. And um, it's one thing to preach, but if somebody's not listening and paying attention, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't do as much. And so I, I thank you for you young people being attentive to the preaching and uh, all the things the church has done. What a blessing. I guess I should have said it last night, but I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not really trying not to be thankful. I'm, I tr- I'm very thankful. But uh, I, when I get in this preaching mode where I'm at right now, I just don't want nothing to detour me off from what I'm about to say. And that may sound weird to you. I got a one-track mind, and a lot of times it's derailed. So I have to be very careful about what I say. But thank you for you that are faithful and have been here for years and familiar faces. That is a blessing to this preacher, and uh, I thank you for that. I told my church not long ago, uh, I was preaching, a, going to preach a meeting, and, and I said this to them, I'm very grateful for the church and what the church does to develop me. And, and that may sound weird to you, but you are who you are. A lot of it is because of the church where you attend. They help to develop you, and God uses different people. And uh, see, I get to preach in our church, and I can shoot the duds and pick out the better ones of the duds, and I shoot to go out and preach them again. But what's been bad this week, uh, and I'm not saying that they weren't duds, but I, there's several I didn't I hadn't never shot before. This is this to be one of them, and uh, and I'm grateful for that. That God puts us and works in our lives and moves. And uh, look at verse number one. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, "Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me." Verse number three, but Jonah, God breaks in to verse three for us to understand that Jonah is about to do complete opposite of what God wants him to do. If you'll allow me for a minute, I I, want to get into the mind of Jonah and I, and I look at Jonah and God says, okay, this is what I want for your life. And Jonah says, but God, I didn't want, I didn't want to do this with my life. I, I, I have another plan. God, I don't mind. I don't mind doing what you want me to do here, but I, I've got another plan. And, and, uh, and, and, and if, if you're not going to let me do what I want to do, that I'm going to do what I want to do. We, we can argue about that statement. That's exactly what is about to take place. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarsus. So he's got in his mind that he is going to go in a different direction. He, he's got it all made up. L- listen to me very carefully this morning. If you're saved, God has a plan for your life. He's got a plan for your life. I don't know what that plan is. Matter of fact, I'm 50 years old, and it's still unfolding in my life today. But if you're not careful, you'll let your feelings, you'll let what you think you want Get in the way of the will of God for your life. And you'll flee unto Tarsus. Notice what happened. I honestly, I may be completely wrong, and and you guys have been here a long time. You can help me with this. I don't believe he intended to really flee from the presence of God. 
I think he wanted to get away from where God was going to send him and wanted God to show up wherever he ended up at. It, It seems that so many times that people make decisions and their decisions are made not that they don't they didn't intend to get out of church they just didn't want to go that far and he fled from the presence of the lord and went down to joppa and he found a ship going to tarsus Notice the next three words. Y'all remember Tuesday morning? So he paid the fare. I I preached Tuesday morning on buy the truth and sell it not. Just for you to know, you're going to purchase some things in your life whether you like it or not. You you can purchase truth. You can purchase the will of God. You can purchase the plan of God or you can purchase the fair. You've got the potential of buying the truth. This is worth way more than this. Oh, this this morning, if somehow, if somehow a young man would recognize that what you have this morning is worth way more than this. Can can I give you a verse? Can I give you a verse? I, I believe it's Luke 15. And when he had spit all... It's all about buying something. Young man, you're going to buy something. You're either going to buy the flesh or you're going to buy the spirit. Hey, listen, this morning, if you're not careful, there are so many things. And the Bible said that he got on this ship, he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it to go with them unto Tarsus from the presence of the Lord You say, well, it says that he was trying to get away from the presence of the Lord, and I understand, but I don't think that he recognized what the picture would look like getting away from the presence of the Lord. I want to preach on this thought this morning on this ship ain't going to Tarshish. I... I think we fail to understand that when he got on, he had in his mind, Brother Leto, where he was going. But this ship don't go to Tarsus. It might go to Tarsus for lost people. It might go to Tarsus for for tourists. But I'm here to tell you, young person, this morning, this ship don't go to Tarshish. You're not going to end up where you think you're going. Hey, 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 you're going to pay all the way, but you're not going to get where you think you want to go. This ship ain't going to Tarshish. You say, I know it's going there, preacher. I know if I do this, this is what we're going to do. No, you don't, because it's not going to Tarshish for you. so amazing it's so amazing the billboards it's so amazing the advertisement of the world that says this goes to Tarshish you don't have to go that far get over here on this ship it'll take you there can I say this number one you're going to sail alone you say preacher that is completely contradictory these verses because the Bible said they were sailors on there let me, let me tell you something this morning. The Bible said when he got on, he went down in the bottom. He was by himself. All the rest was around him. Hey, you're not going to enjoy this ride. You're not going to enjoy what you think you're going to enjoy this morning. He thought he had the plan. I'm going to go to Tarsus. But he sailed alone. Listen. I guess I could say it like this, Sister Emily. It's lonely selling. 
is like, I want to tell you something. It, it's awesome. I, I hate the story, but I love the ending about Naomi. You know what? You want to tell what happened to Naomi? She is lonely and she was all alone. You know what she said? I went out full. I, I, I hate using money. I guess I could do it this way. She said, I went out full. Really, here's what happens. It, it's that too. You're going to submit it. Here's what she said. This is what I came back with. I, I bit all the way to the end, but there's an end of the. Hey, young people, listen to me this morning. There's an end of this thing. There's an end of this thing. No, nobody, hey, hey, there's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And I, I'm saying this this morning to save people. I'm talking to lost people. I don't care which side of the fence you're on. You get a hold of this and it is the ways of death. It's the ways of being all alone. Hey, you can talk about the world. You can talk about your friends, but I'm telling you this ship ain't going to Tarsus. I thought about saying this morning, I ain't buying it. I ain't buying it. I ain't buying it. You ain't going where you say you're going. I ain't buying it. Oh, no, I ain't buying it. I ain't in. I don't want none of it because this is what you end up with. Exactly right. Every time. There's nothing harder. I wish I had a pair of scissors this morning. Let me tell you something that's terrible. I think you, one of you ladies testified about it this morning. Ain't nothing worse to spend the rest of your life, young people, trying to get right with God and stand up. You know how I many, I've been in church, the same church for 47 years. There's nothing worse. See, y'all don't understand. I, I think there's a part of this that we don't really generate as well. It's one thing for a person to get saved today that drank liquor and, and smoked dope and come off the street and he hurts and he's got pains of doing things wrong. But here's what we know, Brother Burner. More than likely, they didn't know. I got men in my church that are great men of God. And, and honestly, and this sounds crazy, they got saved at 21 years of age and they didn't even know what a manger scene was. They didn't know anything about what I know, what you knew. I'll tell you something, guys. You listen to me real well. You get on this ship right here, and if you get right with God, and that's a big if, this is what your testimony is going to look like. I, I, listen, I'm not, I'm not against people getting right with God. Please don't. But I'm, I'm not preaching Right this second, I'm trying to preach to people that's right here. There's nothing worse than you standing up one day, young man, and saying, I went to Calvary Christian School. I went to Calvary Baptist Church. I heard the right preacher. Young people, listen to the preacher. I didn't listen to, you know how many times I've heard that? You know what they say, they're saying? Here's what they're saying. Empty packages. Y'all, honestly, do y'all want one of these to take home? You know why? No value. This ship ain't going to Tarsus. It, it's, I know it says it is, and I know the sign says it is, and I know the sign says it's going to take you to the far country. I know what it says. But when it's spent all, y'all, y'all, have you just dreamed your whole life of that? Any of y'all ever, I mean, just sat up at night and thought, you know, I want an empty wrapper? Is it not amazing if you're not careful this morning? The devil will sell you a false bill of goods. Well, my mom and daddy and my preacher and, and everybody, and they're trying to hold me back from having fun, and they won't let me get on this ship. I'm telling you, this ship ain't going to Tarsus. You're selling alone. 
Let me tell you how you know you're selling alone. I don't know if I'll get much past this one. I know how, let me tell you how you know you're selling alone, young lady. When you can't take your preacher with you. I got to think about that this morning. I got to thinking about, hey, 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 the prodigal son went to the far country and he couldn't take his daddy with him. Hey, let me just stop and say this. It ain't going to Tarsus if your mom and daddy can't ride. It ain't going to Tarsus if your preacher can't ride. It ain't going to Tarsus if your teacher can't. I'm talking about those spiritual people in your life. It ain't going where you think it's going to go. He went all by himself. He's alone. Not only is he alone, but he thought that he was choosing where he wanted to go. The prodigal son thought he was choosing where he wanted to go. Naomi thought that they were choosing the way they wanted to go. But the truth of the matter is that ship wasn't going to Tarsus. We, we can argue all day. You say, well, that ship went on to Tarsus. Yeah, but you forget there was one less passenger. There was one, I, I didn't say, hey, I didn't say the world don't do its thing. I didn't say the world don't stay on its court. I'm saying you are not going to Tarsus. Ain't gonna happen. I could tell you, I, I could tell you about going I can tell you about preaching to the jail on a Sunday. I probably told y'all this, but it worked so well. It was a Sunday afternoon. I was in, I was preaching and it was a lockdown set of pods and one would let in and I would preach and then they would take them back and then bring another section. This young man met me and he said to me, he said, I want to talk to you this morning or this afternoon. I said, okay. So we got done they all went back to their dorm except for this young man. And he began to tell me one of the most horrific stories I've ever heard in my life. He began to tell me how he was raised in an independent fundamental Baptist home. His mom and daddy were missionaries. And they came home. Sister Casper Zach, he thought he met some girl. I don't even know how he met her, probably social media, but I don't know. He thought he could go over there and have some worldly pleasure. He thought that the ship was going to take him to Tarsus and nobody was going to know. He went back home, another state away. And they caught him. And she was a minor. And there he sat in a jail cell, his life completely ruined because he thought that ship was going to Tarsus. He thought he was going to do what he wanted. He was going to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. And there that young man sat in that jail that day. Can I say this just for the record and for anybody watching? I didn't laugh. I didn't think it was funny. I hurt. I, I, I saw a young man that probably had so much potential. Listen, young people, we don't sit in our offices and laugh about people that ruin their life. I tell you what we do. We try our best to figure out how we can help the next one not to do it. That's, exactly that, that's what we do. I, I, I don't have any pleasure in people ruining their lives. I, I'm trying to get them back. I like to hear them stand up and tell this part of their story because they got right with God but I'm here to tell you it breaks my heart because there's some young people in here you don't have to have it like this. 
It ain't going to Tarsus. It's not going where you think it's going. You're not going to be as happy. Hey, listen, the band is not going to be playing like it was when you got on the boat. All the advertising signs are down now. You're on the boat now. I got a message I've been working on. On jump, Jonah, jump. They threw him in. But I, I, oh, I'm, I'm just, the way that I am is so different, Brother Adriel. I think in my mind, what would have happened if when that thing just got off from the dock, if Jonah would have said, I'm on the wrong boat. And he just jumped in. Hey, you know what? There's some young people in here. You may have just pushed off just a little bit. Can I tell you what you can do this morning? I'll tell you what happened this morning. All you got to do is just say, I'm on the wrong boat. I, I'm on the wrong boat. I'm going in the wrong direction. This is not going to go where I think it's going to go. I'm going to get out of this boat right here. I'm telling you, God could deliver you. He could deliver you this morning from this. I'd be, I'd be, I'd probably be willing to say there's probably some young men looking at things that you think you know where it's going. There's some young ladies that's talking to young men that you think you know where it's going. You say it couldn't happen here. It may not be but more than likely it's going to. I'm just trying to help you this morning to tell you this ship ain't going to Tarsus. See, he was going to Tarsus. Listen to me. But he ended up in a storm. Matter of fact, the Bible said that God... God calls the wind. God calls the storm. Listen to me. I, 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 I'm supposed to be done. I, I think I need to be getting close to being done. Because there's somebody in here this morning that God's dealing with your heart about that ship that you're looking at. You're looking at the advertising signs of it. This storm is so bad, guys. You can read it. It's so bad that the guys that do it for a living are scared half to death. They're, they're, I mean, what I'm saying is this morning, young person, young lady, young man, you're headed for a storm that you have never in your life ever seen. Well, preacher, everybody I know they all, they all say that it's so much fun. That's only because they're advertising. It's because they're advertising. It's so, so sad, ladies, young ladies. The world. You know, when my daddy was a boy... My dad watched a TV commercial of a beer running down the side of a cup and as a young or a glass and as a young man he said when I get old enough I'm going to drink one of those. And my dad almost ruined our whole family over an advertisement to Tarsus. It just looked like that's where everybody has fun. This ship ain't going to Tarsus. And the one that you're in, it ain't going there either. You, listen, you're, the, the way of the transgressor is hard. It's always been hard. It'll always be hard. And it is not going. Brother Adriel, if you'll come play, I believe I'm done. Because I believe that somebody this morning, God, God if, if you didn't hear nothing else, just don't forget this. 
this ship ain't going to Tarsus. It ain't going to Tarsus. It ain't going to go there. It, it ain't going there, young lady. It ain't going where you think it's going to go. Well, preacher, I, I, I know what I'm doing. I, I'm older. I'm stronger. I, I know. I'm telling you, the devil is, is tricking you and has tricked you. And you might be in something this morning you don't want anybody to even know. Can I tell you what you can do? Jump. Jump, jump. God's let you get the recognition that where you're at, no good. Jump, get out of that boat. Swim back to shore. Get some help this morning. You say, preacher, I've let some things in my life. I, I thought that's where I was going. This ship ain't going to Tarsus. It ain't going there. You know, they tried to figure this thing out and Jonah went to sleep and prolonged it, prolonged it, prolonged it. Quit prolonging it. The prodigal son, the Bible said, when he came to himself, when he came to himself, you know what he did? He went home. He jumped out. 